Sailing out of the port of Vancouver, Canada is a stunning experience. Getting to the port is a breeze, but getting through the port and on your cruise ship is another story. Both times I've sailed out of Vancouver, embarkation has been a miserable experience. In this episode of the Chill Cruiser, I'll share the eight lessons I learned that can save you a lot of time and frustration. If you're cruising out of Vancouver soon or thinking about it, you're not gonna wanna miss this. Hey cruisers, Andrew from Ottawa, Canada here. Welcome to the Chill Cruiser, where I review premium cruise ships from a chill perspective, sharing tips on how to save time, money, and grief on your cruise vacations. Today I'm going to share eight things you need to know if you're sailing out of the port of Vancouver. It's one of the easiest ports to get to since it's only a short train ride from the airport, but it's unfortunately one of the most frustrating ports I've experienced for embarkation, and I've been on more than 30 cruises on three continents. I sailed on a Pacific coastal cruise several years ago, and an Alaskan cruise this past May, and both times, there were massive crowds of people waiting several hours before getting on the ship. There are a few factors that cause these delays from tide schedules to customs inspections and poor communication from cruise lines, but the main takeaway and lesson number one is there's a much higher chance of running into delays here than other major North American ports. Second thing I learned, which is good news, is that getting to the port area from the airport is a breeze. In fact, it's the most accessible cruise port in my travels so far. Just tap your credit card at the airport SkyTrain station, and 25 minutes later you're at Waterfront Station, which is downtown in a short 5 minute walk to the port. A one-way adult ticket is only $12 Canadian or $9 US. Even if you're traveling with 2 or 3 people, the train is still cheaper than a taxi or Uber, which can run around $40, and it takes longer if there's traffic. The port itself is a bit unusual since it's located right downtown in a complex that houses a hotel, a convention center, along with multiple attractions, offices, and cafes. The terminal is below the convention center and street level, so you have to walk down this path and through a garage to drop off your bags and access the main entrance. I arrived at the port a few hours early and could see the ship hadn't even docked yet, so I dropped off my bag with the porters and left the port to explore the city. The cruise ship I was trying to get on, Majestic Princess, ended up docking five hours late because a ship departing the port earlier in the day left late. Because the tide had started to rise at that point, Majestic had missed its window to sail under the nearby Lions Gate Bridge and had to wait several hours for the tide to recede before it could proceed to the port. At least that's what the captain told us was the reason when we finally got on board. Princess Cruises didn't think to communicate this to anyone or change check-in times, so thousands of people ended up arriving at the port, only to have to wait several hours for all the guests from the previous cruise to disembark. That was lesson number four. Don't expect your cruise line to tell you in advance about port issues or delays. They seem to prefer creating a bottleneck in the terminal instead of encouraging people to delay their check-in time. Even though I came back to check in three hours later than my assigned check-in window, the terminal was still a mess. Checking in was fast, but the process of getting through security and customs took over three hours standing in lines that snaked throughout the entire ground floor of the terminal. That brings me to lesson number five, which is that the port doesn't offer priority lanes for guests in higher tiers of cruise loyalty programs or for guests with a Nexus or Trusted Traveler card. There were bathrooms, but no areas to get water or even sit down. At around the 90 minute mark, port staff started bringing chairs for the elderly, and at about the two and a half hour mark, a few Princess crew members finally started coming around with bottles of water. It was a complete cluster, and a really crappy way to start a vacation. On my celebrity cruise out of Vancouver a few years ago, there were also huge crowds and long waits in the terminal because of an unannounced customs inspection, but it was much better managed. Celebrity was calling people to embark in groups, so you could at least sit down while you were waiting. Celebrity also had a much more visible presence in the terminal, with crew from the ship serving water throughout the day and helping port staff check people in. So how do you handle a port that's notorious for lineups and delays? That's lesson number six. Have a backup plan ready. Look closely at your cruise's itinerary to figure out when check-in closes for your cruise. It's usually 90 minutes before the ship's scheduled departure. Then plot an itinerary with the places you want to visit in Vancouver that ends close to the port area around 60 to 90 minutes before that time. I would highly recommend making time for the beautiful Capilano Suspension Bridge Park, which is about a 20 minute drive from the port. There's free shuttle buses that depart right in front of the port building every 15 minutes during the spring and summer. Check out my video on this amazing experience here. Before you depart from Vancouver, lesson number seven is to print out luggage tags, even if you don't normally use porters. Most cruisers do this already, but I'm mentioning this for the small group like me, who would normally bypass the porters and just walk on the ship with their suitcase. If things are running smoothly, you can check in and embark as you normally would, and then explore the city at your leisure. If the port looks like this, then definitely drop off your bag with a porter if you haven't already, leave the terminal, and use that itinerary you plan to enjoy the city. 
Having the luggage tags ready will save you a few minutes and a separate line to get a manual tag made. You'll have a much better time experiencing Vancouver than standing in a line that'll disappear in a few hours anyway. When you return to the port 60 to 90 minutes before check-in closes, you'll likely be able to embark in a matter of minutes and your bags will be waiting for you at your cabin. That's a much more chill experience. Luckily, when I disembarked this past May, it was fast and smooth. I was off the ship and out of the terminal in a few minutes. But I did have an evening flight home, so I needed a place to store my suitcase for the day while I explored the city. That brings me to lesson eight. You can store your luggage right at the terminal for a reasonable price if you have a later flight. Gray Line offers a place to store your luggage just outside the main entrance to the terminal, with prices starting at $10 depending on the size of your bag. That way you can visit the places you missed on embarkation day without having to lug your bags around. When you're done exploring, you can pick up your suitcase, make your way to the waterfront SkyTrain station, and head to the airport. Embarkation was just the beginning of a week full of lineups and frustration on the cruise. If you're curious about what it's like on a princess cruise to Alaska, check out my full review here. All right, that's a wrap for this episode of the Chill Cruiser. Please let me know if this was helpful in the comments. If you'd like to learn how to save more time, money, and grief on your cruise vacations, please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any opportunities to up your cruising game. Thank you for watching and happy cruising.